Network. This is Dustbra TV, your number one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh God, that we need is a new. Come on, to go fair back to the Bible truth. To come here on a te, to come here on a te, to come here on a te, to come here on a te. Today is a Wednesday, we speak in English. As we are going to start, welcome to our program. Amen. This session is no longer being recorded. Uh, <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. We welcome you again. Today is a Wednesday. Welcome back, Cyberspace. I know you've been listening to the gospel and you're still continuing. Pastor Kabuye and Pastor Sam, thank you very much for the teaching you've just heard. As we continue on Back to the Bible Truth, uh, we are going to teach again about uh, the authority we have in the name of Jesus. A lot of people will say, why are you still on this topic? It's because we want people to learn the authority they have. We want people to know who they are. We want people to know the identity they have in Jesus Christ. For those, uh, if this is your first time to uh, to log on on this media program please subscribe uh, subscribe like uh, the video please so we are going to share before we start i want you to get your phones so that you can share we need to share so that other people can hear the gospel amen share 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 hallelujah we are going to share the word share the word of god to other people so they can know what's going on in the community hallelujah the word of god is being taught and this is our our mandate this year of this house that we are going to preach the gospel than ever before than we ever preached it. We want to people to hear the word. We want people to be knowledgeable of who they are in Jesus Christ. We want people to know their identity because when you don't know who you are, that is a very big problem. That is, you won't uh, function fully as you're supposed to be. We want people to know what Christ has done for them. So there are believers who don't know. You can ask them that question, that who are you in Christ Jesus, and they don't know. My name is Godfrey St. Pembiru, and I welcome you all to Back to the Bible Truth. Uh, we, uh, Sister Suzette has hosted me. We have my wife, uh, Godfrey Mubiru, as the technician, and uh, we are working together as a team. We are ministers of the gospel. We are, uh, God has given us the ministry of reconciling. That is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 from uh, uh, verse 18. We are reconciling people who don't know Christ so that they can know Christ. When you are knowledgeable with the things of God, you are going to walk in victory. Hallelujah. So today we are still continuing with the authority we have in the name of Jesus. How do you use that authority? When you speak, 
Hallelujah. When you speak, when you talk, but you have to know where you stand. You have to know the authority. That's why we come here to teach. Amen. Father, we want to thank you this afternoon as we have come to learn from you, Lord Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, we don't have confidence in our flesh, but we have confidence in the name of Jesus. Today, as we learn about the authority, we thank you that you're giving us confidence in Christ Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord mighty God, that we are being equipped, being edified. Our eyes are being enlightened in your word, Lord Heavenly Father. I thank you for the people you are bringing right now. Quicken their mind as they listen, Lord Heavenly Father. Open their mind to hear your word, Lord mighty God. Reveal to them the secret of your word, mighty God. I understand there are those who are still have questions, mighty God. As we continue to teach, Lord mighty God, those questions will be answered. I want to thank you for Christ who is in us, Lord mighty God. You said our bodies, oh Lord heavenly Father, they are the house, they house you, Lord heavenly Father. Today, Lord mighty God, protect this body as we continue to preach the gospel. Our bodies are going to be strong. They are going to be healthy. Our minds are going to, to be sharp as we think through your son, Jesus Christ. And everybody says, amen and amen. So we are still continuing. I hope those on cyberspace, you hear me loud and clear. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue with the teaching the authority we, the authority Amen. we have in the name of Jesus hallelujah the authority what is the authority we are talking about that is the power given to you after the death the burial the resurrection of Jesus Christ the power given to you is a spiritual power given to you to act up as a believer. Last time when we were discussing, we talked about the attitude you have towards the name, you have towards the authority, you have towards the, the office you are in, the power you have, they have given you. What attitude do you have? Remember we said that our, the, fact, the fact of our authority is in the name of Jesus. Our identification with Christ, that is his name and it's our name. A lot of people cannot take that when you say that Jesus' name is our name. Because lack of knowledge of the scriptures, that is why you don't know this. Right now we are telling you, like right now we are teaching you so that you can, you can acknowledge that. What we have achieved in life what we have obtained everything we have obtained through Christ is through the death the burial and the resurrection in Jesus Christ so we are continuing for where we left from uh, about the attitude amen right now we want to read a scripture which is going to show us the attitude we have uh, in Hebrews, Apostle Paul was highlighting something very important towards the attitude we have in that name as believers. So we are going to go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. If you have been studying with us, you need to have a book where you have been writing your notes and you need to have a pen because you need to write these notes down and you need to be a reader i think it's first timothy when apostle paul is writing to 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 timothy he was telling him to involve in teaching and reading to understand you have to read the written word Amen? Okay, let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 15. What does it say? It says, By him, 
Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Attitude. By him, therefore, let us offer a sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. The word, uh, the word giving thanks implies co confession. That is the knowledge in his name. The acknowledging of the office, the authority, that is the sacrifice of praise. You as a believer, you need to know how to praise. When we acknowledge the office of Jesus, that is our sacrifice of praise to God. Amen? When we do what? When we acknowledge the office of Jesus, that is our sacrifice of praise to God. When we acknowledge what, what is the death, the burial, we acknowledge what is the resurrection he has done for us. Every time you, you, are, you say you are sanctified, you offer a sacrifice of praise. Every time you say you are sanctified, Every time you say you are justified, you, you offer a sacrifice of praise. Every time you say, by the finished work of Christ, you offer a sacrifice of praise. I am accepted in the beloved. Are you accepted in the beloved? Do you acknowledge that as a believer? Amen? I stand be bold before God. Sin can never, you have to know all these. Sin can never stand between you and God. You as a believer, you have to be knowledgeable with all this information. Remember, if you are a believer, sin can never stand between you and God. It cannot. For those who don't know, it means that they, ha they are not yet taught. Every time you say that this reality is an off offshoot of what redemption work has done, you are acknowledging. Acknowledging is very important. You acknowledge his name. This is the attitude. You are giving thanks to his name. When you acknowledge, you are giving thanks. You acknowledge the finished work. Right now we are talking of the finished work of Christ, which he did with the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Let's read another scripture. I told you I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures, but they are good for your soul. They are good for your health, so you can understand who Christ is. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Chapter 2. Verse 11 and 12. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, of which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church, I will sing praise unto thee. I'll declare thy name. I'll declare your name among brethren. It means I'll declare the authority among my brethren. Now we, when we gather in the church, we celebrate the authority as brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters to Christ. When you acknowledge it, you understand it. You acknowledge that we are righteous. We are holy. We are sanctified. That is the praise you are giving. A lot of believers, a lot. Let me tell you when I say a lot. Some of the believers, 
they read the scriptures and say when the scriptures say you are righteous but they don't take it they don't acknowledge it we need to acknowledge what we are reading we are holy you don't have do you don't have to do anything to be holy you don't have to do anything to be righteous you don't have to do anything to be sanctified when I say that, a lot, a lot of legalistic people will say, no, you got to do something. No, you don't. When you say you are holy, that is your praise to God. Praise is not a song. Praise is not dancing and sweating. No. Praise is acknowledgeable, acknowledging the name, acknowledging the office and the authority you're in. When you acknowledge the, his office, his authority, that is the triumph of his work. Amen? That is the triumph of his work. His sacrificial work, what he did on the cross, the benefits of his death, burial and resurrection. He has already provided this. Christ has already died. He's not going to go back on the cross. He has already given us forgiveness, justification, sanctification. We are accepted in the beloved. You as a believer. But if you are not taught right, you are going to have sin conscious in you. Guilty conscience will tell you that you are not forgiven. It will tell you you are not justified. But you, you are accepted in the beloved. When you talk about, when we talk about these things, you are giving praise to God, you as a believer. This is the praise we are giving to God. You make claims of what Christ has done because you know who you are. Amen? You as a believer, you have to believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth, your mouth what Christ has done. You as a believer in your heart, you don't just keep quiet. You need to confess with your mouth. Accepting, acknowledging, confessing, ac acknowledging. Romans, let's go to the scripture. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. You're going to open your Bibles in Romans. Romans 10, 9, say, uh, Romans 10, verse 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, I want you to hear this scripture. If thou shalt confess, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. A lot of people think that we confess our wrongdoings. You know why? Because Jesus Christ became our sin. Where there is confessing of sin, we put Jesus. This is why Jesus became our sin. This is why it says that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy name, that the, in thy heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We don't confess our wrongdoings. We confess our, we confess Jesus who became our sin. For with the heart man believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen? With the heart a man believeth unto righteousness. It's not because you, are, you pray a lot, although prayer is good. It's not because you fast a lot, although fasting is good. But you confess when you believe and you are given righteousness. 
with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is why Jesus Christ came. With heart man believes unto righteousness. So our confession is the praise that we give in acknowledging of what is the redemptive work. Amen? And it's, it's already accomplished in the believer. It's not going to be accomplished. It's already. What I'm talking of right here is already accomplished. It's not going to be accomplished. I am righteous and that is the thanksgiving. I am. You have to know that you are righteous. You have to know that you are sanctified. You have to know that you are redeemed. I am holy. That is the praise to God. But when a believer begins to say, I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. That shows that you are telling God you are a liar. When you start saying that I'm not qualified, I'm, I'm not worthy, oh Lord, uh, you are telling God that you are a liar. So that means you're talking about the believer mm -hmm. in the gospel. Yes. He has to acknowledge he has to, he is, he has to that he's right, righteous. Yes. Because he believed in the finished work of Christ. Of Christ. Amen. The death, the, the burial, burial, and the, the resurrection. resurrection. So that means you are saying you are better than God. If you are saying you are not worthy, you as a believer. That's why Paul calls, Apostle Paul calls confession the preaching of the gospel. Confession, Apostle Paul calls it the, the what? The preaching of the gospel. Hallelujah. Let's read another scripture, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 12. These scriptures are good for you, so. Amen. It says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on, your, on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witness. Fight a good fight of faith, acknowledging, lay hold of eternal life which was given unto you. When we preach the gospel, what is the preaching of the gospel? The good news. When we preach the, the gospel, we are bringing the good news. What is the good news? What he has done. He died my death so that I can have his life. He took my death so I can have his life. You as a believer, you were supposed to die. I was rejected. Now I'm accepted. You as a believer. He went through hell so I can go to heaven. He, he su suffered so I can be healed. You as a believer. That is the preaching of the gospel. What he has done for us. We call it sub, uh, substitutionary work. The exchange. His death, he gave me life. He did for my life. Hallelujah. Those who, those who have just logged on, we are talking of the authority we have in a believer. In, a, in the name of Jesus. You as a believer, you have the authority in the name of Jesus. But you won't know this authority until, until you acknowledge, until you know your identity in Jesus Christ. Therefore, in confessing his name, it is an acknowledgement of the facts of the gospel. What are the facts of the gospel? That Jesus died, he was buried, and resurrected, and ascended. That is a fact. It's written historically. So you as a believer, you, you need to know this. Salvation is acknowledging. 
what Christ has done and acknowledging it became yours. If you can't acknowledge that salvation is already done in Christ Jesus, and that's why he came here, you are still far away from knowing Christ. I sing more, I talk more about the name. I constantly confess the name. That is what was left in uh, part 13, the one we had last time. Today I'm going to begin with part 13. No, the other one was part 12. This is part 13 I'm going to begin with. It's also authority in the name. Dealing with the authority in a believer, you have to know it relates with Jesus Christ. As we continue, we are going to start with the scripture which is in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16 to 19. We want to know who we are because if you don't know your identity or how the, who the scriptures are relating to, you won't find your identity. These scriptures speak of a person and who is that? That is Christ Jesus. That's why we read it to understand. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 1. Chapter, six, uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 16 to 19. Seize, uh, Paul, Apostle Paul is writing to the Ephesus church. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the work of his mighty power which is wrote which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heaven places apostle paul was writing this prayer to the church of Ephesus believers in Ephesus praying for them not to have things not to have cars not to have uh, any other stuff, but letting them know what they are in Christ, what they have, finding their identity, that I cease not to, 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 I cease not to pray for you, but give thanks to you, making mention my prayers to God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you one, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. In the knowledge of who? In the knowledge of him. He continued in verse 18. In verse 18 he said that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Sometimes when you read these scriptures, we read them literally. Like the eyes, eyes, the understanding, the inner mind, the inner mind understanding. May, may understand, be enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling. The one who called you. What did he call you for? For ministry. He has given you a ministry to reconcile other people. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? The saints, uh, I remember when they mentioned saints a long time, we, we were thinking of those people who died <laughs> in Christ, uh, who they, they crucified. Right. Yeah? Those, those are the ones we called saints. But saints, even you who are living, you are a saint. Amen. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? This is the power we are talking about. Towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Mm. 
which he wrote in Christ Jesus, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So you as a believer, you need to know this. You need to know this prayer. A, uh, a new, a born again Christian in a New Testament believing, you need to start praying this, this prayer. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That we may know the hope of his calling. Towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Whatever belongs to Christ belongs to you. Amen? Amen. If you don't acknowledge, if you don't know this, you need to know. And what belongs to us is what we, we have obtained during the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what belongs to us mm -hmm. is what Christ obtained yes. during the death, mm -hmm. the burial, yes. and the resurrection. So a believer has to acknowledge, mm. yes. Don't, don't forget that all this we are talking, we, we, it's already established in you. Amen. It is going to be based on this. It was based on the suffering of Christ and the glory that followed. All those are in the scriptures. But how are you going to know mm. when you don't read the, the written word? True. This is the written word we are talking of. That's why we, we tell you when we come here, get your book, get your pen, so you can write down these scriptures. Amen. That you may know the witness, the power, the glory. In Greek is called the doxa. You may know the doxa, the influence, the authority of Jesus Christ. So a believer mm. is established. Yes. Already established. Based on the suffering mm -hmm. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So he already suffered on your behalf. Thank you. He's not going to suffer mm -hmm. or he's not about, but he already did it. Yeah. So that means you are free from every curse. Yes. Free from every disease. Mm -hmm. Free from every failure. Yes. But you need to come to a point mm -hmm. where you have to identify, to come, to know who you are in Christ. And use the authority, Amen. which is the spoken word. Thank you. And you have to involve yourself in the reading of the scriptures. Amen. Reading is very important. There's a scripture here in First Timothy. If you can read it for us, let me check it out here. It's in uh, First Timothy 4.13. It says, mm. Until I come, mm -hmm. give attendance to reading, mm -hmm. to exhortation, mm. to doctrine. Apostle Paul was uh, telling his son Timothy, mm. there are three things he told him to give attendance to. Mm. One, Atten reading. Attendance to reading. Two, exhortation. And then the last one, to doctrine. Those three things are very important to the, to the believer. Mm. Doctrine, exhortation, and reading. You as a believer, you need to indulge yourself in reading. You won't know until you indulge yourself in reading. Mm. Amen? Amen? So, as he rose from the dead, he said, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. And he then turned to the believer and said, Go. That's how he gave us power. Amen. The authority we are using. Go, that the power is given to you. When he gave it to Christ, God gave it to Christ, mm -hmm. Christ gave it to us. Amen. 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 So a believer has the authority. And the authority mm. is the office. And the authority is the person the we believed, the Thank name you. Jesus. Yes. So you speak in his name. And things have to subdue. Thank you. The believer doesn't just only know that he has authority. True. He has to know how to use it. True. Yes, Mr. Zimbiru, you wanted to say something? And most believers, mm. they have been tossed 
left, right, center mm. uh, with with situations, with frustration. Yes. Because they don't know that they already have the authority. Thank you. Already you have the power within you. Mm -hmm. You just have to use it Amen. and speak in his name. Remember last uh, last uh, Wednesday when we were teaching, we mentioned about that attitude. I just mentioned it few a uh, few hours, few minutes ago when I mentioned that the only way you're going to know this attitude when you are knowledgeable, when you are taught, the confidence you have, that knowledge gives you the confidence. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Apostle Paul said that we are always in confidence in knowing. Let's read that scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 6. Chapter 5, verse 6. We are always in confidence. So then, mm. being always filled with good courage mm. and confident hope, yes. And knowing that while we are at home in the body, yes. we are absent from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's how it says. So we have confidence. Mm. What you know sets the premises of which you are. You either walk in confidence, boldness, and authority, or you walk in fear and cowardness mm. and uncertainty. <coughs> so. Yes. What we need, what brings confidence to a believer is the knowledge. And how do you obtain knowledge? By reading the word of God. Thank you. And what is the word of God? We have learned the word of God is a person, is our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And he already given us the authority mm -hmm. to use. When you know that you know with no doubt, whatever situation comes your way, you use that authority. That is the confidence we have Thank in Christ. You. Remember, God has not given us a spirit of, uh, of fear. fear. Mm. He has given us power, love, and, and a sound and mind. A sound mind yes. The believer in Christ, Jesus, has a sound mind. Mm. But how are you going to know the sound mind when you're not reading the scriptures? True. You have to read the scriptures. And the sound mind comes into effectual when the sound mind is educated mm. with knowledge. Mm. Apostle Paul calls it renewing your mind, renewing in knowledge after the image of him who created you. Amen. Last time we were giving a verse of the day, mm. Romans 12, right. 1 and 2, mm. by renewing your mind with the word of God. Why do you renew your mind? For the service mm. which is you are going to give for the preaching of the gospel. Sure. That you are going to teach people what you know. Amen. When we have, when we remind, when we renew our mind, we are maximizing what we know. Mm. You can't maximize what you don't know. True. Whatever you know, that's what you maximize. We have to utilize the authority we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When you don't utilize the, the, the authority, the devil messes you up. The devil is going to oppress you because the devil doesn't possess, uh, possess you, you, you as, a, as believer. a believer. Can possess the unbeliever, but mm -hmm. you as a believer, yes. already Christ resides in you. Yes. But the devil can oppress you if you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. If you do not understand the authority given to you. Yes. Rather than um, running here and there, please turn boldly and speak. And remember, it's not your authority. Already, you don't have to put in too much gimmick. To use, there was a man of God, they sent us a clip. He was chasing the demon and even he did the somersault. Eh, almost broke his back. We do not have to do gimmicks. No, no, no. We just have to speak the word of God, speak his name, and things have to change. And uh, remember, the New Testament is a testament of spiritual things. Amen. And the Old Testament is a testament of uh, it was a testament of physical metaphors. Right. Yeah. They so, had to touch things yes. for them to know that God has spoken. Thank you very but much. But for us, we don't have to touch. Yes. We don't have to have a bottle of oil. Yes. We don't have to touch a car like a poor use the handkerchief. Hanky, yes. We do not have to do that. Already Christ is the, the, the promised 
son, the seed, yes. already came and accomplished everything at, at, at the cross. So what we have to do, he has already given us the authority in his name to preach, to do everything. Right now, you may not understand what we are talking about. But if you continue studying with us, all these questions you have will be answered. Because you might be uh, with a lot of questions when we say what we are saying right now. It's because we have took, taken time to read mm -hmm. and understand the scriptures in the light of Christ. Amen. 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 I say that when you, when you, you are being oppressed, the devil pushes you around. It, it doesn't possess you mm -hmm. because you're already a believer. You are translated from the, the, the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. to the kingdom of light. Delivered. Delivered. Mm. So right now, you have to utilize the authority given to you mm. so that you are not pushed around. You know who you are. You know, when you are given a position of the boss mm. and you have uh, people you are managing, mm. you stand as a boss and tell them, Mr. Mobiru, I want you to move that chair from there to there. Mm. But if you don't take that authority, the people you are managing will tell you to move the chair. They'll manage, they'll <laughs> manage you. <laughs> they'll manage you. True. Because you, don't, you are not using your authority. And you don't know who you are. So, what takes you for you to have confidence in the authority? Knowledge. Most of believers are confused because they are not knowledgeable of what they have. True. Amen? Amen? So, whatever is written in the Bible, was first spoken. Amen. So to understand it, how are you going to do? You're going to read, read. it. Then it's written so that we can, it can be spoken. Amen. So it's the spoken word. Mm -hmm. Even if we see uh, God said in the beginning, let yes. there be. So it was a spoken word. Yes. So the authority is in the spoken word. Thank Please you. do use that spoken word and speak to your situation. Amen. Words are symbols of authority. Mm. That when you observe Jesus was tempted, mm. but he spoke to the devil. Mm. The words of the scriptures are for us. It's, it was written to us. You just mentioned it that uh, in the Old Testament, mm. we mentioned it that it was they were seeing things in a metaphor. Right. What they were longing to see, mm. that is what we have right now. Amen. The Holy Spirit sits in you. Right. Resides in you. Resides in you. Amen. Doesn't, yeah. Resides in you. Amen. You are the temple. Mm. You are, last time I brought it in a, in a phrase that you are the house. Yes. You house the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, the words of the scripture are for us. And the scriptures inscribed by the authority. Amen. When you own the authority, you speak. You yes. don't just get into a problem and you keep or quiet. Arguments. Yeah? You Argu just have to yes. speak. You, you speak. don't even have to shout. When you know you have the authority, you just speak and, and command. Command. And things are being done. So let's read uh, in James chapter 4 from verse uh, 7 to 10 how uh, I'll let you know. Verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 7. Um, James. James 4, 7. Mm -hmm. It says, mm. uh, 7, Submit yourself therefore to God. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. What do you do when you want to resist the devil? You resist him. You speak. You submit mm. yourself to God. Resisting the devil, mm -hmm. go for and he'll flee from you. Continue, draw nigh to God, mm -hmm. and he'll draw nigh to you. Yes, cleanse your hands, ye mm -hmm. sinners, mm -hmm. and purify your hearts, you mm -hmm. double minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. You told me up to up 10. ten, yeah. Ten, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Now all these scriptures are talking of God. God, you submit, you come under mm -hmm. the authority of God. 
when you, you come under the authority, the devil has to do it. To flee. You talk to him so that he can free. The authority you have in Christ is best in union. Amen. Amen? Amen. You have in Christ with God. The union you have in Christ. I told you when, uh, before that we are, we are inseparable. Mm. Now sin cannot become between you and God. Mm. It cannot. Because already God came with yes. penalty for us. This is the permanent union we have. So we can speak from anywhere. Amen. We can command the devil to live. If the devil comes to you and you just say, I'm not worthy. What did we say? You are, you are, you are say, telling God that. You're dying on Christ yes. was nullified. Yes. Mm. Amen. You can be anywhere. You know, they used to tell us, uh, we used to read the scripture which says, pray constantly, mm. everywhere. We did know, we thought you have to go in a room and pray. lock the door. Mm. And pray. Mm. But when you read the scriptures in the light of Christ. Mm. You can be here. And you start praying. You can be in the kitchen. And you start praying. You can be in your car. You can be in your office. Without ceasing. And you can pray quietly in your heart. Yes you can pray quietly in your heart. Mm. We are of God. We are inseparable. A union. All the time. You, you hear some people say when, uh, when we talk about married people. Mr. Moviru, let's put God aside. This is between you and me. Mm. But if you are born again believers, you cannot put God aside. Because he's ahead of us. He's, he's, we are in union. Amen. Inseparable. Amen. You need to remember the authority is a stem from the union. Mm. Amen? And you need to remember your authority internally as a believer. Amen. Remember when we read John 3, 16? For God so loved the world. Let me give his begotten son. Whosoever believes shall not perish but have what? Internal. So when you believe now you are in with God internally amen and he has given you that authority internally and you can use that authority when you are in sleep or you had a bad dream or when you are walking or when you just woke up or when you're in the bathroom you use the authority because it's internal it's not borrowed mm. it's not delegated anymore no, no now we own it and remember god god never goes into vacation he's always with you amen, amen. Sometimes we forget her. Does I'm come have done they say no, he never <laughs> leaves you, none forsake you. Amen. We should be confident. We should walk in confidence as believers. Mm. We are we we need to observe when Jesus when we are with Jesus. Amen. And I want you to, to, to remind you, Jesus never tempted anybody. Jesus spoke the word of the scriptures when he was tempted. Mm. So you as a believer, you need to know the scriptures. True. So that you can speak what you know. Mrs. Zimobiru reminded us when we were reading the, the when Bible study mm. yesterday that the, the inner inward spirit want to remind you what you don't know. That's true. It's just like you going to school. Yes. And then if you didn't study yes. that syllabus they gave you, and then when the exam or quiz comes, mm -hmm. how are you going to answer the questions if you don't you didn't study? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. The Holy Spirit has to remind yes. what you know in the Bible. In the oh, Bible. Yes. So you as a believer, you need to know the authority you have and you need to know how to use it. If you don't know, it's going to be a problem to you. True. Right now, for those who have just logged on right now, we are talking about the authority mm. you have in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You might say, Mr. Mobiru, last time when we had you, you, took, you were speaking of the authority. Are you still speaking of the authority? Yes. Why? Because we want it to go on your heart. Is that, 
Yeah. <laughs> we want you to uh, to be the second nature. Yes. Like as you get up yes. and you have to take a shower, mm -hmm. this the authority has to become second nature. Yes. That whatever situation comes your way, you do not have to panic. Thank you. You have to use the authority. Be, have the confidence that God is going to answer your prayers. Amen. As we heard, he does not go on vacation. He doesn't go on vacation. Mm -hmm. I was telling you that Christ, when he was tempted, he spoke using the scriptures. For example, Jesus, uh, in several actions, mm -hmm. he spoke in, uh, using the scriptures. Like when he was, when he, when he made, uh, he, he spoke to the tree. Amen? Mm -hmm. He spoke to the tree and the tree dried up. Mm -hmm. Amen? So Amen. you as a believer, you have to know who you are. In Christ. You have to know, you have to speak, I am like Christ. Amen. Yesterday, you asked that question, <laughs> am I like Christ? Today we were in, uh, in the study, then we, we, uh, they answered the question. You are like Christ, okay. not like Christ as God. Okay. But as he is right now, okay. you have the same nature. You have the same nature. You have the, they have the same spirit. You have the <coughs> same nature. But we are not God. Yes, but we are not God. But you are like Jesus. <laughs> That's why we say that, that the authority stems from a union. Therefore, authority is an expression in our identity. Amen. You are not God, but as he is, so, so we are. You are. Because if you don't know who you are, you won't know how to use that authority True. as a believer. True. It begins with your, with your understanding. So this is why your identity is very important. Mm. Let's see the way Jesus operated in his authority. How he operated with the word, I am. Amen? We are going to see that uh, Jesus constantly declared who he was in uh, the book of John, the gospel. John chapter 14, verse 6. Verse 6 or 16? No, verse 6. Okay, John 14. Yes. Verse 6. Jesus says unto him, mm. I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. Yes. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I am the way. He said, I am, I am. Is what he kept saying because the authority stems from the identity. Mm. We are who we are because of the finished work of Christ. Amen. Once you are in Christ... We are who we are yes. because of what Christ did at Calvary. So that gives you a chance. Someone who has been saying, I'm a sinner. God will never forgive me mm -hmm. of what I have done, of yes. what I have committed. Because yeah. that actually has hindered a lot of people to get their breakthrough. Not because God has not delivered or set them free. Remember, you are who you are yeah. of what Christ did. What Thank did Christ you. do? He was, he, he, he died. died, he died with all your curses, mm -hmm. with all your failures, with all your shame. And then he was buried mm -hmm. with all those things. Mm -hmm. And now he, he was resurrected yeah. and ascended. So when he resurrected, he gave you that glory. He gave you that righteous. You do not have to work for it. You are who you are in Christ. You are free. You are not cursed. You are blessed. You are healed. You are set free. Amen. You are who you are because you believed in the finished work. Amen. Yes. The problem we have as believers is called identity crisis. That's true. And if you cannot find your identity, that means you cannot function in authority. True. And that actually even in real life, if you get someone, let it be a wife or a husband, mm. people who have insecurity, they mm. are very tough to deal with. Thank you. Mm. That's why he began with I am. Yes. 
You cannot exercise authority in the absence of the identity. That's so true. identity is very important to a believer. You need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. It's very critical, very, as a believer. John chapter 6, verse 35. The gospel? The gospel. John chapter 6, verse 35 says, mm. And Jesus said unto them, mm. I am the bread of life. Yes. He that cometh to me mm. shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All these scriptures are metaphor. Mm. I am the bread of life. You might think, oh, the bread, bread. No. I am the bread of life. Mm. I, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, mm. and that believes on me shall never be thirsty. Mm. Christ I'm the ble bread of life. That comes to me shall never hunger. I am the bread. I don't have the bread, but I am me. So I am the bread, meaning I am the bread of life. Yes. That means that whatever pertains on in life, yes. he is. Some, he is. That I when am. You, who, <laughs> the one who was the son of God has what? Life. Life. So when you have Christ, you, you have, have life. life. That's why he says, I'm the, I bread. Am the bread of life. Life. Mm -hmm. So that means he knew who he was. was. Thank That's you. That's why he was using that I am. Mm -hmm. I am. Amen. So he knew he, knew who, he, was. he so who was. He was telling the listeners. Yes. That I am the bread of life. I am the, and, and the bread of life. Because he knew from the scriptures that Thank he you. was the bread of life. So this is what we are showing that he spoke from the scriptures. So you as a believer, you need to know where you're speaking from. You need to know where the position you are standing in. Time is going. Let's read one scripture, then we, we pray. Mm. Uh, John, the gospel, uh, chapter 8, verse 58. John, chapter 8, verse 58. Yes. Jesus said mm. unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm. before Abraham was, was, I am. Yes. Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham I was. Mm. Before Abraham I was. That, that scripture confuses a lot of people. So Jesus walked in the reality, mm. speaking through the scriptures. I am, I am, I am. That is his identity. He knew who he was. Now he was speaking of the one who he is with the great authority. Amen. When you know who you are, you are going to use that authority. Have you seen the Americans when they, the police get them here? I know. Oh my God. You don't even, you they don't hide. <laughs> they, they will say, I know my rights. You can't touch me. <laughs> you can't do this to me. But these Ugandans, when they, even they touch, they have that authority, they won't say anything. They'll be so, shaking like crazy. We as believers, we need to be like this. As who are in Christ, who knows our authority? We should stand. And in any situation that comes our way, we Amen. speak Amen. as authoritatively yeah. as believers. Yeah. We command situations. Mm. We pray so that we, the prayer rearrange situations mm. as believers. Amen. Amen? Amen? So right now we are talking about the authority a believer has in the name of Jesus. Amen. The attitude. How do you approach the name? Are you scared? Do you speak that you are not worthy? You remember what you said. Mm. I become to you as I'm not worthy to speak. We are worthy to speak to you. And this, I don't know. I think the people who, who taught and taught and taught <coughs> until they taught us. Yes. And we are not blaming them because now we are going back to the Bible and we have to read it in its context. Yes. And the lighting and the revelation of Christ. Yes. Someone comes mm. and they are going to preach. Yes. They say, oh. I am not worthy to preach the gospel. 
So for me, when you say that immediately, oh, I am not worthy, then why are you, why are you coming to speak to the saints? Already <laughs> you have said you are not worthy. Yes. And I think people who brought that kind of phrase, mm -hmm. they wanted someone to say they are humble. Mm. You, oh, yes. you don't have to say, you do not have to deteriorate your self-esteem yes. for you someone to call you humble. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not worthy to speak. I'm not worthy. If you are not worthy, then don't speak. But already God has given you yes. that you, are, you, you have are the sanctified. value. You are sanctified. You are righteous. You are you forgiven. Are holy. You are holy. Yes. You are accepted, you you are accepted in the beloved. beloved. Don't, don't, don't tell yourself, oh, I'm not worthy. You Please, are worthy. Whoever so, is listening to us. That means you have to say, I'm accepted in the beloved, so I have your Authority. Yes. To speak. Amen. Yes. You right. say I have the authority, authority to, to preach. <laughs> Go back and read Second uh, Second Corinthians, uh, verse eighteen, to see that you are which chapter? Uh, Second Corinthians, chapter five. Chapter five, verse verse 18. eighteen. Okay. You are given the ministry to reconcile other people, so you have the authority. Amen. 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 So this, uh, we want to thank you for the opportunity you have given us to come into your rooms, to come into your offices, yes. to come into your kitchens and preach the, and teach the gospel. Amen. We've been learning together and we have to continue. Apostle Paul told uh, Timothy that of those things you hear from me, mm. teach it, entrust it with other people. Who will entrust it with others? So we need to preach this gospel. We need a chain to go all over. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for today. Yes. We want to thank you for the gift of life. Yes. You said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Yes. So, Father, we speak this word. Yes. Let Amen. it, mighty God, set your people free. Yes. Lord. Those who have been in bondage of yes. not knowing who they yeah, are, having yeah. identity crisis, so God, mm. thinking they are being cast when already you became a curse for them to be, be free. free. Yes. So Lord. right now we speak to their minds to be free in yeah, the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. For those who are sick, we speak healing, healing right in now. Jesus' mind, in, in, them, in every cover, part of their body, body which have been right suffering. God. We the command it to right function in it right now and line up with the word of God God. Yes. in the name Lord of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you yes, that you, are blessed, you have blessed us and you are continuing to bless us, oh God. Mm. Let the knowledge and understanding and, and the wisdom continue to abide in yes. our lives yes. as yes, we walk in this Victoria journey you have yes. given us, oh God. We thank you that as we have heard your word, yes. let's go back and ponder and yes, continue to search yes, so that Father, we may really Father, know who we are God, in you, O oh God. Thank you for Father, the authority yes, you have given us. Yes, oh Father, Lord, we Lord, speak Lord, peace Lord. in every situation where fear has been taking over. We command fear to live in the name of Jesus. We bless your name in Jesus' mighty name. We pray and ascend. Say amen, amen, amen. 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 Tomorrow we are not going to be here in Luganda, mm. so we are going to have uh, there's a where we are going to uh, to preach. Mm. So tomorrow we won't be on t uh, teaching in Luganda the same t uh, uh, preaching we have been doing. But the next uh, week, yes, we we'll, we we'll do it, and then the same teaching. Birthday, there's a birthday. The CEO of Diaspora TV. Mm. Happy birthday to you and thank you for giving us an opportunity to preach the gospel. Mr. Watsoni, thank you very much. God bless you and happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Watson. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord enlarge your territory. May you have your heart's desire. May you continue to know God yes. as you are celebrating your birthday. Mm -hmm. And we are glad you were born. You give us opportunity to be on Diaspora TV. Thank we you. bless God Thank for your you. life. Amen. 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 And remember, remember Jesus, Jesus Christ is, is still in full, full control. control. We God love bless you, you all. And those on Cyberface, we love you. Thank you, thank you. Remember. This is Dust Pro TV.